Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ages Marauders League Winter 2024, the start of a brand new season. And we are back. My name is Moose, joined here today by the one and only Septi. Septi, how has your holiday been? Welcome back. I am doing so well, Moose. My holiday was great. New year, new league. We got a whole bunch of changes to the game. No more mythics. Uh, I mean, new barons. It's just absolutely incredible. I think everyone is looking forward to the new map changes. I mean, I myself have not done a full study of the game. There's just far too much to learn so far. And I'm really looking forward to see how these AML teams, you know, have sort of how much work they've put in, how much homework they've done with all the new changes. I, I will say LCS being on live patch definitely is helpful in terms of getting a fast and quick look at the pro meta read. Um, but other than that, I'm just excited to get into it. Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited too. You know, I've had a couple of casted games here in season 14. Like you were talking about, so many changes to so many different aspects of the game, which is definitely putting a lot of the veterans on their toes. And it's allowed for just that slight variation of the game to keep it healthy, to keep it fresh. And I am so excited to be back here for another league of Aegis Marauders. We're going to start off season, this season with some of our returning champions coming back in our first streamed match. We've got Mario Kart 7 versus Dorado Gaming. This is going to be Dorado Gaming, or I'm sorry. I right. Dorado Gaming yeah. Zeta. Yeah, Dorado um, Gaming Zeta. And yeah, so this Mario Kart 7 team might be, you know, the first time you see the name, but definitely not the first time you will have seen these players. Um, it is comprised, as Moose said, of some of our former AML champions, specifically King Coney and Sunsets, um, who are going to be in the top and jungle. Um, we have the Balls, aka Sloppy Joe of Distortion Overdrive from Last Split, as well as Wistfully and Mr. Kiwiism uh, from Con Esports X, the runners up of AML. Uh, summer 2023. Now on the other side, Dorado Gaming Zeta, a staple in the Aegis community, um, have gone for what I would call a roster explosion, only keeping Joker on from the previous split and moving as well to the support role. Um, Starting from the top, we got Small Crumb, uh, Nukes, Odin, and Indigo as the other members of this team. And on screen, we have a, uh, sorry, on screen, we have the drafts for either team going into game number one. Sorry for a little bit of a scuffed, uh, start to the stream if you didn't if you weren't aware there's been some some uh issues with the riot api this evening yeah um, and this week so we are not able to do the games live as they would normally be streamed um instead we're going to be going into these games after they've concluded um and just go as fast as we can through them but moose let's take a look quickly through this draft before we get into game um starting off i think pretty on brand at least for the meta so far what we've seen karma first pick for zeta definitely a really strong flex um to be played in that support role as well as in mid lane um with the really overtuned malignance item that's been coming out yeah yeah really uh an exciting like a good start to the draft but like you were talking about some of the champions that we have seen consistently coming in from both sides uh the Xin Zhao gonna come in for, the, for Mario Kart 7 just gonna go over the rosters really quick Dorado Gaming Zeta Karma Lee Sin Varus Aatrox Nautilus we got uh, Mario Kart going with Xin Zhao the Rakan the Tristana the Corky and the Camille so the themes that I get you know coming in from Mario Kart is once again they've got a or for them they've got a Pretty early game jungler. They've got a Tristana and Corky and a Camille that are all going to be able to do tons of siege damage, all being able to move around the map pretty well. And then Rakan to be that initiator, that disengager for those team fights. It's what you would expect out of a high level team, players that know how to play the game, that have won championships. I, I like the composition overall. Um, the only question mark that I have there is that Camille, I feel like there has been, it's not been the best patch for Camille with Divine Sunder being gone, but it is still a good comfort pick and is something that is still probably, you know, A tier, S tier on most people's tier list. So something that can work pretty well, but I'm curious to know, you know, what kind of build Corky decides to go for. I've seen so that sort of like pseudo AP with the Muramana um, Malignance, but yeah. I haven't really seen a lot of success just on stream with it. Dorado Gaming Zeta, on the other hand, you know, you got the engage with the Lee Sin, you've got the crowd control with the Varus and potential tons of damage with the Aatrox. So 
a little bit more of that team fight oriented team coming in from Zeta, but are they going to be able to have those successful team fights? Are they going to have that teamwork and that coordination moving into this battle? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think this game is going to revolve heavily around the junglers um, with the addition of the Void Grubs coming in on this, you know, new season. It's going to be really key to see what these junglers are thinking at the five minute mark. Lee Sin, you know, a perennial jungler, one that's really favored by a bunch of the um, the Eastern Leagues, LCK and LPL. You know, they, they, they love their Lee Sin. It is always a pick that is in the pockets. And I'm curious to see uh, how this pairs with the Karma in the mid lane. Um, because, I mean, Karma's going to have a lot of priority. Corky, not the strongest pre-6. Um, so should be looking to play around that top side. But yeah, I mean, this is going to be a battle, I think, between uh, Nukes and Lone Ring, or I guess Nukes and Sunsets, as their their handle is. Um, Zin, I think, is maybe a little bit more premier on this patch um, with the introduction of, or I guess the reintroduction of the current Titans, uh, Titanic Hydra um, with the auto attack reset is been really nice for Zin Zhao. Um, is able to stack up that Q very quickly as well as get that uh, unsuspecting knock up for the rest of the team to follow up on. Um, but I think, you know, I would argue that Dorado Gaming has to end this game, not in a fast manner, but they have to be, you know, at least trying to up the pace because when you're against champions like Corky, like Camille, that are really going to start bullying you the later this game goes on, you're kind of on a clock. Um, and so I got to see how, you know, this new Zeta team handles the pressure. Yeah, and, and this is also the bragging rights for Dorado Gaming Zeta. I've been getting messages from the two Dorado Gaming teams talking about who was better, who was worse. Um, and so if you're able to take down the some of the defending champions, some of the runners up, it's definitely an opportunity to put that to put that on your belt and show that you you know what you're doing and you have your stuff. So gonna be a fun game. Before we get into that, Dragon Soul predictions once Ooh. again, Septi. I I'm I'm mixing it up in terms of the dragon predictions. I'm going to to, which I'm going to draft it a little bit better. One dragon for the first player, two dragons for, after that. We're doing snake dragons. now? Yeah, and then the snake. That's so fair. I think right. this takes a little bit better. But Septi, I'll let you go first for this one. I got to I gotta go with my favorite dragon. Give me Hextech. Let's go. Uh, I will go with Ocean and Mountain. Sounds good. Um... I'll take, uh, give me Infernal and give me Cloud. Let's do it. And I will take Chemtech. Gonna be a exciting game to get started. Really excited to get into this season of the AML. And we do not have to wait for a spectator delay. We are ready to jump into this match. Well, we're jumping into this shout out to our producer, the dream behind the stream. It is Wookie Monster is going to be taking PVS's spot. Uh, probably for the best. Probably for the best. Uh, thank you, Wookie Monster, everything that you do. Uh, let's go ahead and get into the match, though. Uh, starting things off, five at man starting. Like you were talking about, the jungle is going to be, I think, where all eyes are on. Nukes versus Sunset. Who comes out on top? Yeah, I mean... Both junglers are going to be going for this this yellow tree, this precision tree. And curiously, on the bot side here, um, this Varus is going to be going for Hail of Blades, which you know signals to me that it's going to be more towards that lethality style. Um, of course, you know could still go on hit, but in a game where Varus is going to struggle to you know hit key targets, especially when compared with with Karma, it just makes sense to go for the poke build this game. Um, I'm curious to see in this game what Joker is going to be doing. Um, because, I mean, we've known Joker, he's been a perennial AD carry in the scene for a while now, um, and is now moving into a different role, uh, somewhat, somewhat, you know, of the likes of what we've seen from Reckless and what we saw from Zven in the past, um, and so I'm curious to see, I mean, uh, here's the thing, I think AD carries make the best supports, not to, you know, not to trigger any support players, but... AD carries, you know, once they fully committed and once they fully learn the role, make really good supports because they know... Uh, and are constantly thinking of what they would be wanting to do in the moment. And so it just makes that, you know, that transition a little bit more seamless because, you know, obviously they're already thinking about the best interests of their AD carry because they're thinking, what would I be doing? <laughs> what would I want my support to be doing? Uh, but anyway, as we move into this game, jungler is going to be starting their respective blue buffs. Um, looking to at least do a full quadrant clear before anything crazy happens. But an interesting thing to note, Moose, though, is that Zen yeah. is going to be pathing up towards the top side 
which means that uh, his camp should be sequencing nicely into the grubs as they spawn at five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and similarly, Nuke's going to be going for that dragon. And I think a trend that we're going to be seeing a lot is uh, it's going to be one of two things. It's either going to be teams flipping and losing the game at first grubs, or it'll be junglers trading dragon for first three. Um, I don't yeah. know about you, but my preference is... Uh, I don't think grubs are worth throwing the game over, at least is no. my opinion. No, uh, we were uh, so I was I was doing Emerald Draft League last week, and literally that happened. We had a a team go in and almost throw the game on those first grubs, uh, and it's nice to get all six, but you don't want to lose two. the game over it. Yeah, you it, only need two. You just have to get enough, but. I, I hear what you're saying, though. I, I hear what you're saying, though. But I want to go back down to this bottom lane for a second. Uh, and Mario Kart 7 going to be having the likes of Wistfully and Mr. Kiwi. Now, this is a duo that has been around here in not just the AML, but just in the Masters level scene for multiple seasons. They've got that coordination and they've got that teamwork on lock. So they're really going to be challenging, I think, Joker and, and Emily here in the early game. We'll have to see what plays happen once uh -oh, that goes in for the gank. Nice flash coming in from Frosty. Going to get out, but... Does he know that Sunset is on their trail? Let's take a look at that as mid lane is also in trouble. We've got the Corky very low. Frosty is though out of time. He will be the first blood of season 2024. Going to go to Mario Kart 7 and Sunset. Yeah, Sunset's going to be picking up that first blood. No assist, unfortunately, going over to King County, but really well played by the top side duo. We were just talking about how Wishfully and Kiwi were a great bot lane duo, but King Kony and Sunsets, they got that synergy. Sunsets knew to be there at the right time. Um, Kony, you know, had the wave push into him and was able to get a, a nice trade onto Frosty, blow their flash early, um, and, you know, really punish the Aatrox early for making a bit of a mistake. And now we have a bit of a trade onto the spot side. Not quite going to get the grand entrance knock up onto Varus there, but still forces the ghost out. And it's going to be a nice little advantage uh, for the bot lane of MK7. Uh, and I want to talk about this. You talked about the duo um, in the bot side. I sort, of I sort of was thinking this a little bit going in and looking at these teams, but I would argue that this MK7 team is the 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 best combination of players from their respective rosters. And oh. I don't want to call it a super team because that's going to curse them, you know, to finish yeah. outside of the playoffs. But I mean, I, I think the top side of, you know, the GG grandma team was for sure. I think the, the best part of their lineup um, and similarly for the bot side uh, of that Connie sports roster. Uh, and so to see them put together now, I, I'm really looking forward to see what happens as we see nukes now on the spot side going to be able to sneak the grubs i think uh also dodged that crab which is going to be really nice and all of a sudden uh zin is going to find out that those grubs got taken from under his nose and for those watching keep in mind that the grubs notification doesn't pop up globally until the third grub is taken um so you could take the first two not have any notification go out um and just leave them there and when the enemy jungler shows up to try and take them there's only one left so now uh use that little tidbit in your solo queue games if you would like to abuse that but now we're looking down i mean level five Good here on nukes. nukes is gonna flash out of the grand entrance but now has no means of escape no way to get out we'll have to use the flash sunsets no flash use it in the last exchange and now we've got odin potentially in trouble big damage on the whistling kiwi though they are out of position that's gonna be the re-entrance of nukes we got ngo trying to come through gonna be able to take down nukes kiwi and whistling survive and that's gonna be a triple kill for sunsets now four and zero yeah, I mean, Dorado Gaming just overchased her a little bit, and it looks not to be very good for Frosty on the top side. King Coney going to lock him down with that Hextech ultimate as Odin goes down very low in the mid lane. So very nice one for zero on the top side from King Coney, and a very nice cleanup uh, from the side of MK7 on that bot side. Now five to zero in the game, about a 2,000 gold lead in favor of this red side here. And I think Dorado Gaming had a really good engage on their hands. They caught, uh, they caught out Sunsets, who was just a little bit too aggressive there onto Nukes. Pulled them into their jungler had pulled them into their jungle rather and had a really nice bit of kiting there, but they could, but instead they actually chased to the point where they were pinched between the Corky and the rest of their team, and so then Joker, Odin, uh, and this Varus were all caught out of position and just got instantly blown up um, after the side of MK7 turned to fight them again, and I mean it looked good, 
but I think, you know, just a little bit overextending. Uh, and now we are in a bit of a rough situation for this blue side here. Yeah, I mean, good mobility out of Wistfully and Kiwi. Really wanted to highlight that, being able to use the rocket jump and the dash to be able to get away. And then NGO coming in with the big damage, with the big rockets, was just enough to be able to get it. And that's actually going to also give them a summoner spell advantage. Odin used their flash. Meanwhile, NGO did not. All bottom lane summoner spells were used and... and the only one that's available is that ghost from Indigo. We'll see if that's potentially punished here in the next couple of minutes. Like you were talking about, Cody, also getting the kill here, but could potentially be overcommitted to this one. Gonna have nukes in the area, gonna flash and hook shot away. Something for Dorado Gaming Zeta for their efforts down up there in the top lane. I'm sorry, I'm gonna stay muted for a second. My fire alarm is going off. People are cooking. Oh my house. no! So people come are back not... as soon as it turns off. <laughs> people are not cooking well, apparently. What is going on? Guys, get it together. Um so, okay, we'll talk about the game here a little bit. It is a lead for Mario Kart 7, about 1.7k right now, and you know, full steam ahead. This is another season where King Cody, uh, who was on GG Grandma last season, was in Shirima. If you guys were here for the draw show, you guys kind of had my thoughts on the different divisions. And you got a lot of heavy hitters in Dorado Gaming, in Dorado Gaming Zeta and Mario Kart 7 to round out, you know, some of the some of the top tier teams here. But Iridescent and Dawn looking to show what they can do. Uh, if you guys were there, I told you about the Void Division. It's going to be so chaotic. So many big players in that division. Uh, Ionia, very much a wild card. You've got teams that really want to be in Grand Finals this year, but haven't had a Grand Finals appearance in a couple of seasons. Akuma Blades, Indigo, uh, some of the Bing Chillers players. So, I mean, really think all of the divisions are able to show some really fun play as we get later on into the season i don't think we have really any dud division this season so gonna be definitely fun to get into that but going back to the game here folks mario kart 7 gonna be able to take the void grubs that's going to mean it is three to three nukes unable to get any play in on it too wistfully but with that aggression is going to give Toronto gave me the opportunity to get some turret plating and they will be able to do so yeah, and, and, most and most importantly here, Wistfully gets pushed off a wave or two of CS as well as yeah. uh, Indigo was able to collect that plating gold, um, 175 for each plate there. I mean, you only lost three grubs. It's not the worst thing in the world with the advantage that King Coney has on this top side. I think it, we should be grateful that it was only three nukes, you know, giving up that priority on the bot side earlier as we have a Hexac ultimatum coming down from King Coney and Frosty is just a passenger in his own demise. As yeah, the combo comes out. Oh. It's to flash away still, but it's not going to get away, I don't believe. Sunset's just going to walk this one down, has the E to close the gap at the end. And another kill going over to this top side duo here, and that's going to be really disastrous because there is no one on this Dorado Gaming side to stop the push. And when they have three grubs and two champions with multiple auto attack resets in their kits, we are seeing the damage done to this tower. That is two plates going to go down to three. Um, and the gold lead in that top side is just going to absolutely continue to expand as Nukes is here now. Oh, very, nice response. Very, a very, very nice usage of the quickness. Stops any, you know, kick flash shenanigans coming out from Nukes there. And I mean, Dorado Gaming are just getting stuffed here a little bit. Uh, not really able to find anything. Nukes going to try and still look at this bot side, but with two flashes and an exhaust up, it is going to be very difficult to find an angle here. Yeah, five zero and zero on Sunset. So Titanic Hydra already completed. The first big items for Dorado Gaming Zeta are now out, though. You have the Yomu's Ghost Blade and then the Malignance, that Malignance build you were talking about for Odin on this Karma. But the gold lead is about almost three thousand two and a half right now. It is mostly on sunsets, which, you know, for late game could potentially be, you know, better for them because the gold isn't on your your late game carries. But for now, you know, sunsets has the opportunity to just shut this game down, close this game out 
if they're able to find a couple more kills, if they're able to find a couple more neutral objectives. They got those Void Grubs. Looks like they are potentially posturing for this Dragon. And we'll see if they are able to get it with the nukes in the top side of the Rift. It is looking unlikely that Gerardo Gaming is going to be able to respond. But Frosty is looking to take down King Cody. No hook shot available, no flash available. Oh. They're going to be under tower, but that Sonic Blast is way off. Yeah, and I think they focus on going a little bit too fast there. King Coney definitely overextended their trade there onto Frosty. But with the HP, Frosty definitely could have maybe pushed the wave in and they could have played for a dive. But instead, all you have is nukes showing on the top side with nothing, with no showing on the top side with nothing to show for it, uh, which seems a little strange to say. But that is the truth there. Dragon picked up uh, for this MK7 side, and it will be a Cloud Soul, I believe, in this game. Um, currently sitting two dragons to zero in favor of the red side. I mean, the gold lead is still 3k, so it's not too insurmountable for Dorado Gaming. Uh, the support items are coming through uh, on these, I mean, bot laners. I believe the Bulwark is going to be the item picked up for Kiwiism. It's just going to reduce that little incoming damage. It is like a mini crown. Um, but I mean, crucially though, the fact that King Kony hasn't finished an item is, I think, really important in this game. I think Frosty would be having a much worse time if they had finished literally any item. Um, I guess if we go Sheen into a finished item, it's not the worst thing, but Wistfully gonna be jumping oh, in. Oh, got here. a flag coming, coming through. Nice quickness. That's gonna be bye-bye Varus. Wistfully will be able to take down Willis, and that's gonna be two kills for MK7. Teleports coming through, and that's gonna be NGO picking up one to add to the kill count now, eight to zero. They have no other neutral objectives to go for. They're going to go towards mid lane to clean that up. And they might be able to get another turret play for their efforts. They will. Nuke's going to land the Sonic Wave onto Kiwi. But I don't know if you want to go for this play. You won't even be able to. Kiwi will just dash away. Yeah, very nice combination from the team of MK7 there. I kind of wish they would have done that at a timing where they could have gotten more for it. Because, I mean, you think about what they expended, right? They used Corky TP. They used, you know, both combat summoners and both ultis off the bot laners. Uh, and they also used the package, which is a six minute cooldown, I believe, at this point. Um, so it is not going to be up in time for this next dragon. And all you really got for that play was a double kill on the bot lane, which, you know, is nice. It's 600 gold. Uh, but hold on, we have a little bit of a fight here. World End is going to come through. Sunsets does have flash, but he's going to get knocked back in. Shutdown's going to go over to Nukes. That is 800 gold in their pocket, but Rift Herald taken by Sunsets. Moose, would you believe me if I said that play was more valuable than the one we just saw bot side? I would believe you, but I'd like to not. <laughs> So with that 800 gold shutdown, that evens out the play that happens boss side there. Uh, I think including the plate, um, maybe not including the wave, but it is very close as Kiwi is. I'm going to try to go for a little bit of an engage. Not going to get the flash, but he's going to get the ghost out of uh, out of Indigo there. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be a struggle and Dorado Gaming really have to make the most of the amount they expended on that bot play uh, around this next dragon, whether that's, you know, guaranteeing to a cross map play where they know that Corky can't answer with TP um, or looking to fight considering that the package is going to be on cooldown. Um, and I mean, looking around the map, it seems like the first items are going to be coming in for most players in this game. I believe Frosty is also close uh, to finishing that Sundered Sky, um, which is a new item on this patch since the removal of Gore Drinker as well as Divine Sunder. It is a bit of a combination of the two uh, where, well, not a combination of the two, but it is a it is an item that heals you for each unique champion hit um, with a short timer. But looking on the map, we see the Rift Child spawn in the top side. And let's see if Sunsets has their driver's license. Let's see if they're able to do it. The headbutt is going to come in, going to be able to get it. And now Frosty is in trouble. Hextech Ultimatum will be enough to finish the job. And King Cody will be on the board now. 2 0 and 1. Play potentially in the bottom lane. Kiwi going to deny any sort of aggression. Sunset's going to get another headbutt on to the tier 2 tower. They might even be able to get a little bit more damage onto it as Nukes is now in the area. Going to miss another Sonic Wave. Man, those have been off all game, Septi. Yeah, I mean, I don't think the worst, I don't think the most punishing thing in that moment, I think if he hits the Q and goes in, it's maybe really bad. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it has not been, you know, it's a warm-up game for Dorado. We, they, they are... They're pretty, they're pretty in need of warm-up games from time to time. Um, but again, I mean, new roster, a whole bunch of people. Ooh. Okay, quickness gonna come out. That's actually gonna be flat. Value quickness. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I kind of wish that we try and react to this. I mean, uh, I'm. I mean, I don't know. I kind of wish we tried to react to that because even if you die there as Varus, 
you're up in time for the dragon that spawns in 40 seconds. It's not the end of the world, but now, I mean, Kiwi is going to have quickness again. Probably by the time this dragon spawns with Flash, it is going to be really rough for this Serato gaming team to play. I mean, they just have to protect this Varus with their life. Um, but yeah, I mean, looking around the map for this third dragon, it could be a give angle for Dorado, considering they don't have Flash on their AD carry. Frosty getting a nice chunk on the top side. But uh, the ball showing up. Gonna get a nice little trade. Frosty, I don't know if you want this, because this Corky is not weak. Yeah, that's Frosty. World Ender's gonna get popped. Gonna fear the minions, but not NGO. They're gonna be able to take it down. Also, keep in mind, Wistfully was able to sneak a back in, whereas Indigo was unable to do so. So he doesn't have his upgraded Mana Mune yet. We'll see if they are able to get the dragon half. Double eight. TP on top side. They're going to come through, and they're going to maybe try to go for nukes here. Hectic Ultimatum is ready. They're going to try to go for it. They're going to get the stun. They're going to get... Wow, nice kick coming in from nukes. But Flash going to come forward from Cody. Going to try to finish the job here. Hookshot's going to be up in just a couple of seconds. The uh, toss going in. Nuke is going to flash away. We'll be able to survive. And now King Cody potentially in a precarious Another situation. Double TP on top side. And going to come in. Three TPs are going to come through. King Cody's in trouble. Gonna try to get out with the hook shot. Yes, they do for now. Okay. Oh, but that's gonna be Indigo trying to Corky. get any play on the bottom lane. That's a lot of damage in on the NGO. Gonna be able to take down Odin, but will get shut down by Frosty. Yeah. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Wistfully and the rest of MK7 are gonna go for an inner tower and they're gonna get it. Yeah, I mean, that'll be a couple of shutdowns going the way of Frosty and Odin. So very nice play for Dorado on the top side, responding to the aggression, or sorry, over-aggression from King Coney and the balls there. Just, you know, going a little bit too far. Yes, you trade a tower on the bot side, but in a game where you're controlling, you know, so heavily, I mean, you just got your third dragon. I think there's a rule that a lot of people forget to follow in comp. It is don't make a play on both sides of the map. Um, oftentimes, it's because you don't have numbers advantage. Uh, especially, you know, in a situation like this where Nukes did a nice job running away and was able to stall enough time uh, for his solo laners to come up with TP. Um, as Frosty now going to be in a world of trouble if Sunset is able to find him. Remember, Tiamat going to guarantee the knockup if Sunset gets on him. Should have W soon. Oh, Ooh. not going to land. Oh, it's so not flat. done with this fight. Oh, they are my committing goodness. to it, and Kiwi is going to come through with the grand entrance. That will secure Frosty's fate will go down sunset will take their sixth kill of the match with baron spawning in 20 seconds yeah and a, I, I think that credit probably has to go to kiwi or to whoever called that play out because there's really nice communication coming out from this duo kiwi oh maybe flash into a wall there it, is what it looked like yeah flash uh, into a wall but they are gonna get the inner tower in the bottom lane yeah, and it looks like this is going to be a Baron start with the package picked up by the balls here on Corky. It's just going to be really nice. They either insta start Baron or they're going to look for a potential fight on the mid lane here as Dorado looks for this tower. Um, but either way, I think it's a favorable situation for the side of Mario Kart 7. Baron started up now. Sunsets, remember, no flash. And no Go flash on Kiwi. Package here comes is going to get dropped. Huge damage in onto Odin. Hectic Ultimatum is going to keep Joker in the area. Kiwi's going to go down. Double kill for Frosty Willis. Indigo trying to do what they can, but unable to stay alive. That's going to be wistfully taken down one. But it's a triple kill for Indigo. No one gets Baron. And it's a three for three play that Dorado Gaming Zeta will happily take. Yeah, I mean, Dorado Gaming gonna use that any any way to, you know, start leveling out the gold at this point is a play that Dorado Gaming will favorably take. Um, three kills on Averis who hasn't even finished their tier stack yet is gonna be really nice for them. Um, it means that, you know, as this game gets a little bit further on, should be able to start putting out a little bit more damage uh, than they might have been able to put out had the game continued to go downhill for this Dorado side. Pickaxe. Yeah, it's a that's a whole pickaxe right there. That's a pickaxe and I I, I want to say fairy charm, but that's not what it is. Fairy charm is the mana one. I don't know what the CDR one is. I gotta do my homework. But anyway, second item is gonna be coming in for both mid laners here. Gonna be cosmic drive for the karma, which is a little bit interesting. I feel like I've been seeing a lot more people go for um uh, horizon focus as their second item on karma mid just because you have so many natural slows um, on your damaging abilities because you have the root from your w as well as the slow from your q um it's a very anyway. aggressive it's a very aggressive item like i would expect the cosmic focus if you're like dominating that's expensive and allows you kind of snowball a little bit more but i, I agree like i think horizon focus would be 
uh, a good choice regardless though two items if we can take a look at gold really quick wookie see where the gold is allocated is it two thousand gold, gold on Zinjin. Zinjin. that's a lot oh of gold my god <laughs> yeah two thousand gold advantage on on ngo laundry gonna have a three almost a three thousand gold advantage on nukes but it's an even gold game for indigo because i got that triple kill wistfully and indigo both at 8500 but this was this is the worry that you have when you have a zin Zhao player is if you let the opposing team get back into it the gold on a zin Zhao is going to be less valuable than a gold on wistfully or on ngo the further that the game goes on and you've got to be able to equate that gold into kills here in the mid game it got yeah. three items on the zin Zhao though well. that's a frozen heart yeah, Xin Zhao is as strong as he will be for the entire game. At this point now, he'll just get tankier. This Frozen Heart item is absolutely busted, as Wistfully gonna do a nice job to give Kiwiism of an out, and now this is a really scary part. Sun's gonna be going in. All right, Joker's gonna be able to get the depth charge in on Wistfully. They are caught out of position, and Kiwi's gonna go down. That's gonna be Angel picking up one on Odin. That's gonna be Wistfully being able to take down Joker. MK7 dissecting Dorado Gaming Zeta. Frosty will be third, and that is a double kill for Wistfully. Dragon Soul confirmed for MK7. Yeah, and I think credit has to go to Sunsets and Kiwiism for locking down the Narado team for as long as they did because it allowed Wistfully and uh, and the Walls, I believe, to deal enough damage to Joker to knock him down and then rejoin the fight um, with all of their dashes and, uh, you know, lockdown ability. So, I mean, again, it looked like a fairly decent fight for Narado, but that's just because the dps carries of mk7 were just away dealing with joker um but i mean the resulting play is going to be third is going to be dragon soul rather picked up for the side of mario kart 7 as well as an inner tower in the mid lane and the gold lead sitting at around 9k right now is going to be really nice for this red side here should be looking to pick up their third items all around for the most part um and i mean this is really scary uh, yeah. If you are, if you are, no, not even in this game. If you are the rest of the AML, right? You see this game. We see Dorado Gaming, who, you know, are a, a pretty well-known name in the Ages community. Finished round of 16 last year. Uh, this MK7 team is looking really dangerous and nukes i don't know if you want this my friend nukes is gonna try to get out but the quickness is gonna come in to be able to land it on the three members teleport's gonna come through from ngo are they gonna be able to get any good valkyrie no package available frost is coming in with the world ender king cody's now in the area that's a lot of damage on the in on the ngo but they survived for so long ngo does not go down double kill for the corky wistfully will take the third yeah a very nice engage coming out from the mk7 side odin you don't have flash you are not allowed to to be this far forward oh odin gonna go down that's gonna make it a four for one trade sunsets will take it and the flash in on to indigo will secure the first ace of the aml yeah and a nice follow there from uh from sunsets on to uh the varus who got a little bit baited by their mid laner sticking around for as long as they did uh but I think credit has to go to Joker there. Was able to land a hook onto Corky to guarantee at least one kill. Goes back the way of Dorado. Uh, Baron going to get taken down by this Mario Kart 7 team. And this game is uh, on the verge of ooh, doing a very nice job. Going to be giving this Baron buff to the balls in just a second here. Yep, there it is. Comes, and the Baron goes down. And I mean, this Baron should be really nice for them. I think with the composition they have, they can send, they can confidently send both Corky and Camille to a side lane just to buff the waves. Uh, Karma does a nice job of clearing minions normally, but not into Baron creeps as TPs are coming out from Dorado. It looks like they're going to try and potentially set up a play in this bot side here to catch the Baron team lacking just a little bit. Joker going to find King Coney here. All right, King Coney, Depth Charge, not available, not used yet for Joker, not available, might be up in just a second. Teleport's gonna come in from Frosty, the world is gonna come through. King Coney's gonna get Hex, I called the on Odin. That's obliterating the Dorado Gaming Zeta roster. Mario Kart 7 is gonna race to their first victory of the season. Dorado Gaming Zeta go all in, and unfortunately, they just do not get the flop they were looking for. MK7 will win game one. I'm not sure if the, the game might end here. I'm not exactly sure because because uh, Indigo did a nice job of clearing that mid wave. It is going to be 15 seconds. They might just be able to take double inhibs. If this mid wave gets here on time, though, they should be able to end the game, but it is going to be really, really close. I think they're just going to be going for double inhibs here. Uh, potentially. I mean, they're going to try and go for it. They definitely have the wallet to make this work if a fight breaks out again. 
Um, but yeah, no, it definitely is going to be game over for the side of MK7. Very nicely well done. Dorado Gaming, they tried to go for a play on that bot side as a few extra cleanup kills come in. Joker surviving on 1 HP there in the end. Um, but no, I think, you know, it was an, it was an okay game uh, for Dorado Gaming. I think the play they went for at the end there was sort of, you know, your only option. I think they just need more people there the next time before they commit to going so far into the jungle. Because um, they started that fight as basically a 3v5. Um, that was a little bit hard to play for them. But, you know, they, I don't know, I, 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 what can I say? Mario Kart 7 looked really clean in that game. There were a couple moments that they maybe overcommitted just a little bit. Um, but, I mean, as we both know, Moose, uh, when, you, when you get such a big lead, it's pretty easy to fall into the habit of having fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is, it could be a good thing for the other team from time to time. But uh, no, I mean, MK7 did a really nice job. They were pretty clean. I think we saw the duos look really nice from their previous teams. Um, I think QEism had found some pretty insane engages on that Rakan. I think, uh, you know, again, Sunsets and uh, Sunsets and Coney looking really nice on the top side. And, and the balls on the Quirky, again, in mid, just being really solid all around, you know, provided a pivot point for the Zinja to get pressure and then play around the map. Um, just very nice overall, and I'm, you know, looking forward to game two to see how Dorado is able to step it up, because I think a lot of these players have been playing for a for a while in this ELO bracket, and so they know what's what. They, they're able to take, you know, criticism and adapt. Um, and knowing Joker, Joker's going to definitely step up in comms and tell them to, to focus up, and I think they'll be able to do just that. Yeah, I, I think so as well. And and to your to your point there, uh, when you were talking about it in game, I mean, this Mario Kart Seven team is is the team that the team to beat, uh, and, and all teams should definitely be looking at Mario Kart Seven. And with that game one performance, they've definitely shown that they've got what it takes to be a dominant player here in this season. Uh, not in the bag. This this season is definitely not in the bag for Mario Kart 7, but this is a big this is a big showing if they're able to have this consistent type of play throughout the entirety of the season. The, the other teams of the Shriba division and the other teams just in the AML definitely need to be taking notes and looking at how they potentially adapt. And Dorado Gaming Zeta is going to be looking to do just that here in game 2. We are still in game, so we're going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll be back for the start of game two. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Aegis Marauders League. Game number two here between Dorado Gaming Zeta and Mario Kart 7. Mario Kart 7, Pagan Game 1. I wouldn't say German precision, but definitely technical in their uh, in their dissection of Dorado Gaming Zeta. They now just need to win this game in order to close out these series and have an early night. Septi, let's go ahead and get into this draft really quick. Dorado Gaming Zeta, once again, going to go with that Karma, but going to be pairing it with a different style of composition. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be, you know, same with that Karma first pick into Xin Zhao Rakan. I think there have been no changes in bands as well. Um, same three on either side. I mean, Dorado Gaming clearly had a plan for blue side. They wanted to take this Karma as a flex. I think we see it paired nicely with the Ezreal in this game. Um, Jin is going to be the other bot laner, though, for MK7, which is going to be nice for them just because there's no real resistances on the Dorado Gaming Zeta carries, and Jin has been absolutely lighting up so lucky recently. Um, a really powerful champ uh, champion with this uh, lethality builds coming out. Um, again, I mean, Dorado... They're cooking a bit with these drafts. Mm -hmm. I don't know, if, and I don't know if it's necessarily a good thing. Um, it's a bit of uh, what I would say is it would be a, a draft that they're confident in playing themselves. It is not a draft that we typically see um, on this patch. I think the drafts that Mario Kart 7 has is maybe a little bit more standard, um, bar the gin. Um, Ari, we haven't really seen too much since last year. I think a lot of people are playing those champions that can really abuse malignants. I know it's built on Ari, um, but I mean, we've been seeing a whole lot more of like the Nikos, the Orianas, um, obviously the Azirs, uh, Corkies. I mean, there are so many S tier picks that are left up in this draft that it's a little bit concerning to me that Dorado Gaming don't feel the desire to play it. Um, even LeBlanc, LeBlanc is absolutely crazy uh, into Azir this game and pairs really nicely with Graves, but I'm not sure if it's that Dorado game doesn't play it, or if they just believe um, that this mid laner is more, pr uh, just prefers to play Ari more. Um, mm -hmm. By the way, interesting mid matchup. Yeah. Definitely is more safe, I guess. I, I, in his ear. I wanna, like, I think that to your point, Ari, Ari is not the first champion that I would pick in season 14. Uh, just because the items just aren't tuned to her. Their best item, you know, her best items have either been removed or completely bought or completely different than what they were before. But it can work. It is still potentially, it's, it is still a something that a lot of players have up their sleeve and something that they can bring out. So, you know, curious to find out if that means that, you know, we're going to see, uh, we're going to see them be able to make that play happen. But, I want to talk about, I think, a big draft faux pas here coming in from Dorado Gaming Zeta. They, in game one, they ban out the Gwen. In game two, they ban out the Camille, pick the Orn, and then allow for the Gwen to be picked. Now, maybe not as strong as she was in season 13 with the Riftmaker changes, but still, I don't think that that's a choice that we should be making. Well, I think to, I think just 
looking at the way the drafts went, I think Dorado Gaming were trying to get an Aatrox pick um, in game one, because you see the Jax ban as well as the Yone ban, which is a, is a pretty prototypical uh, Aatrox answer. Um, one that Zayas, you know, tends to really like to go towards in the LCK. Um, and I don't think, it looks like they just weren't prepared for this Camille pick is what it seems. Uh, and so MK7, you know, moving into this game, I think a Malphite ban from them is a really nice change from that Gwen ban in game number one. I mean, you look at their team, you see Xin Zhao, Jin. Um, they're not really getting through a Malphite if one decides to come out. Um, mm. And I think Dorado Gaming sort of realized that as well, is that the damage, you know, from Xin and from Jin is not really going to be the tank shredding sort. Um, which is why then again, I'm I'm really pleased that MK7 went with Azir, which is going to be, you know, that more so late game carry, that DPS focused champion on your team. Um, and Dorado Gaming bit. They they said, all right, you know, I we agree that this, you know, press R to go in mentality is where we want to go. And so they pressed the Orn without thinking about the champion like Gwen that was still available. And even, you know, that wasn't even the only tank buster that was available. It was just, you know, one of the premier options because, I mean, Let's think about it. I mean, Gwen was Gwen was up, Trundle was up. Trundle, we've been seeing a whole lot. Oh yeah, uh, not That's so much in the here. top lane, but it is a very very strong pick. Um, Orn obviously has its place, and to me, it seems like Dorado Gaming has a very clear identity of what they want to do. Right? They want to just sack the top side. They want to just let this Orn suffer a bit, um, and they want to just play with Graves and the Karma Ezreal through through the bot side and try and squeeze out this gin. And so we'll see if they're able to do it in game, um, which we're actually about to get into shortly here. But before we do so, we are back with a sponsor read this season, same as last, coachify.gg. We thank you again for your sponsor. Um, and for those of you who are unaware, coachify.gg provides tools for esports coaches to manage their teams and players while also finding new students. Click the panel located below the stream to check out their website for more information. And with that, Moose, I'm pretty, pretty excited to get into game number two. I think Dorado Gaming has a good game plan, and I think Mario Kart 7 has a whole lot more to show us. That was a really good transition. That was good. You were, you were, you, you've. I didn't you've... spend the off season sitting on my butt. All right. Thank Moose. God. Thank God. <laughs> I'm, I'm really happy for you. But let's go ahead and get into Dragon Predictions really quick. You accurately predicted that it was a Cloud Soul in game one, which means I will go first, and I will start with the Mountain Soul. All right. Um,. I am going to go with Hextech and Mountain. Oh, you said Mountain. Hextech and Infernal. Sorry. Give me the damage strikes. Okay. And I will take Ocean, which will leave you with uh, Ocean and... I'm going to take Cloud. I'm going to take it. I think it could be All Cloud right. again. So I'm I'll gonna take give the you... Fart Dragon. Um, it's okay. It's going to be... It's going to be Chemtech Soul for sure. I can feel it. All we're right. Gonna, we're going to jump into game now. It is game two between <laughs> Mario Kart 7 and Dorado Gaming Zeta. Pretty Thankfully. fun. Thankfully, Wookie knows that you're going to throw it to the game and not me, because I would have totally skipped the, dr the dragon game that we got going. I think we got to somehow throw in a, a grub a grub count game at some point this season, too. Oh, OK. How many, fun addition. how many grubs do you what's what's the well, it's, uh... it's got to be 6-0 for MK7 this game. But anyway, oh, OK, OK. <laughs> All right. All right. You're, you think 6-0. I'm going to yeah. predict. I'm going to predict in the over under. I'm going to predict under. And Dorado right. Gaming Zeta is going to at least get one. <laughs> All right. Um, I, I like that. I like that. One sets the number, the other goes over and under. Yeah. I think, and... I think going under is pretty safe. I think, I mean, just looking at the game, I think two things. I think topside is absolutely sacked for Zeta. And I think also Graves hates taking grubs. That is the most, okay. as a Graves player, it is the most irritating thing in the world to try and take grubs on this champion. Your, your autos are constantly getting blocked by the mini grublings and you just cannot hit anything. So so what you're saying is that Nukes is actually going to be pathing towards topside to go for them. Um, I mean, uh, no, he's going to be, he, no, he's going to start his red and then run. I mean, I don't know. Probably he'll be pathing top because if he's not insane, if he is insane, he'll, he'll take his red and then run straight to Sunset's Gromp. But I don't think that's going to be the case this game. That's more of a solo queue thing. Um, so it is really strange to me that he's starting as red. I don't know what Nukes is planning in this game. Um, but as you said and pointed out so nicely, both junglers are going to be siding on the bot side, which means that we could potentially have some early action in the top side. Um, 
But I mean, just looking at the way these lanes are going to go, I think the most action will definitely be in this bot side here. Frosty might be getting beat up, so the camera might constantly be going up there. Uh, but fear not, it is an Orn's job to tank damage as this Vizier is taking a whole lot early. Yeah, fleet footwork though, gonna try to move around, move around. Odin is looking to go for some of that early damage with that electrocute and just maybe looking to see if they can push NGO out of lane, but no uh, pots being used yet by NGO holding on to them. Gonna be under tower now. Gonna use that first one at just this moment. But like you were talking about in draft, it is King Coney's job to make Frosty's life a living hell and get as much value as possible here on this Gwen, missing the cannon minion on stream. Come on, King Coney. Yeah, I mean, that is the, uh, it's expected, right? Cannons on screen. It's gotta be missed. Let's see if Wistfully can do it. Come on, I believe. Oh, oh. we'll never know. We'll never know. He got it, he got he, it. Yeah, yeah, that's why the camera panned away. You know, that's why. But anyway, oh. um, King Cody actually gonna be in a really nice spot if Nukes decides to drop a camp and come for this gank. Um, it's probably gonna be unlikely, but I mean, this would be a really nice angle. King Cody, no flash um, in this game. Gonna be going for the ghost instead. Is Frosty gonna be trying to just do enough to keep Coney around, keep this wave in a good spot. Um, but Nukes not going to drop camps, just going to keep playing for themselves for the time being, which I mean, I honestly agree with. I think it's more important that you are able to, you know, keep the game as neutral as possible for this Graves. Um, going to be going for the gank now, though, although it's given Sunsets enough time to clear. Frosty going to miss that knockup. Coney going to pop the ghost in exchange. Now Nukes might be in a little bit of trouble here if Sunsets is able to find the E. Oh, gonna be able to get out. So Ghost was used. Frosty does not use Flash and Nukes does not use Flash. So a net positive exchange for Dorado Gaming Zeta. Sunsets or Laundry has the river control to go for the Skull Crab. We'll see if he is able to get it. A, uh, oh, the, hold on. Sunsets actually is gonna be in trouble here because okay. it looks like Arn's gonna get pulled over here. King Coney. Flash? Did not, yeah, King Coney did not spend enough time in that top side there. And Frosty decided to drop the wave and come contest the crab. I was gonna say it was looking real unfortunate for Nukes in that lane because it looked like mid had prio, top had prio, and Sunsets was just gonna be able to take a free crab. But with King Coney basing there, again, didn't have much HP, but still was able to provide pressure against the Orn in that matchup. But Sunsets gonna get the crab, but force to use the flash instead. Yeah, no one's going to be there for the grubs. No early grubs this game. Uh, unfortunate that we don't get to see Nukes try to go for them, but it's probably the unwise decision. He's gonna go. He's gonna go back. We're gonna see sunsets go back as well. Uh, Krug's gonna be taken, so, and not gonna be in a position. Nukes is not gonna be in position to go for a gate, but could potentially go for this dragon spawning in four seconds. Will at least start the scuttle crab. Meanwhile, in the mid lane. What's going to see NGO go for the teleport? Both Odin and NGO with their teleports now consumed. But it's Dorado Gaming Zeta on the Dragon first. We'll see if there is a contest here by MK7. Not quite yet, and it doesn't look like it. Yeah, and I think a nice job from Odin there was able to get Pryo in the mid lane and get the first TP off, which meant that they were back in lane to push the wave before NGO was able to contest it. But now level 6 for the Azir instead of level 5 for Ari. But it will be a dragon going down shortly for the side of Dorado Gaming. I'm not sure why it's taking so long to take this dragon. I think they were hitting that for the full 40 seconds that it was alive for. Um, but as we look towards the top side of the map, I would love for Sunset to just run yep, straight for these grubs, which is what they're going to do. Um, potentially actually looking for this Orn, who is level 5 with no mana um, in this top side. But no, instead, just going to go for the grubs. Going to take the free play. Um... As I think now something needs to happen in this bot side because we look at this Ezreal who has absolutely no mana to do anything with. Gonna be forced to base now. Um, and I don't think it's on a cannon wave either, which means this Ezreal might miss out on one or two creeps. Um, which is okay, but it's still enough of an advantage that potentially Wistfully might hit level 6 off of um, at some point. But yeah, three grubs gonna be going the way of this MK7 side as Joker gonna look to try and stop this wave from going in. Getting a nice chunk onto Wistfully who doesn't really care too much, just gonna be backing after this play anyway. Um, and yeah, the game is just, you know, pretty even for the time being, 300 gold in favor of MK7. Um, pretty much purely sitting, I wanna say, on this bot side, a combination of, I guess, bot and mid. But uh, yeah, gonna be just chilling for the time being. 
Yeah, an aggressive back from Kiwi is going to get denied. He actually does not get it back here. He's going to stay in lane, going to give Joker a bit of a tempo advantage. And so we'll see if that maybe comes back to Biden finally going to be able to get back. But it could be just inconsequential, to say the least. Backs, though, going to be boots for Joker. That's Ionia Boots of the City. It's a good back for your for your support to start things off. Kindle Gem and uh, regular Frosty. completed, but now Frosty kind of maybe out of position. Ornhorn's going to get used. Nice knock up and first blood going to go on to Sunset, but now King Cody looking to make it a one for one. Will be able to do so. Flash pops as well. No more procs in the needlework, but it's first blood to draw to Gaming Zeta. Yeah, I mean, really nice job from Frosty. Just, I guess, barely was able to clip the edge. Um, of the Gwen W there to get that knockup. But finding a whole lot of damage onto Sunsets who had not really been able to spend all their gold, was sitting on a good amount, but now gonna be coming out with that TM out as well as the Ruby Crystal. Um, but yeah, just really nicely well played. I thought Frosty was inting, headbutting like that, uh, considering that Sunsets was so close, but did a really nice job. Graves is also able to pick up that kill, which means that, I mean, Luke's is gonna be sitting in a good spot. Um, still gonna find it a little bit hard to 1v1 the Zin should they come across each other. Um, but we'll be looking to at least pick up the serrated Dirk on base and I mean hopefully look to start playing with their bot lane because this uh, this Ezreal Karma should be online enough now to where they can actually push the wave and contest uh, potentially a bit of Sunset's bot side. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty impressed with Wistfully and Kiwi rather just for the lack of attention that Nukes has brought or, or just being that skilled they have actually started the game with a cs lead over what is normally the more aggressive more early game oriented build coming in from dorado gaming zeta on that ezreal karma we haven't seen those big roots we haven't seen those big plays to go for those summoner spells all of them have been available pretty much all game but now we got to play here in the mid lane big wow. charm coming in from odin as the emperor is divided we get a nice true shot barrage coming through from uh, indigo Try to finish the job on Ooh. Kiwi, and they will. As though I predicted a play happening. That's going to be one, two kills for Toronto Gaming Zeta. The curtain call does not land in onto anybody, and that's going to result in a 600 gold swing over to Toronto Gaming. Oh, Ooh. no! Odin! Odin, are you going to die? No, he doesn't! Sunsets actually got... Uh, I think Sunsets didn't believe that they were actually going to hit the W there. And so as a result, actually flashed almost nothing um and i think potentially could have gotten away with that kill had they just been a little bit more patient with it because odin did not have flash did not have ulti um or rather did not have ulti themselves so was not really gonna be able to run away if they traded flash for flash um but i mean to go back to the bot lane play i think we can classify that moose as the first caster curse of the year i, I think um, so as well but now frosty maybe frosty gonna get a play Oh, that's needlework, and that's actually wind becomes lightning coming through with sunsets taking up Frosty. Yeah, really nicely done, and I think we have to talk again about the play. Mid lane nukes did a nice job, and Odin as well was able to find a kill onto the Azir, who had flash available, but just did not use it well enough there. Um, I think they had waited until the uh, the Azir had used their Q ability to actually dash their soldiers forward, which meant that there was no ability for the Azir to escape. Um, but now Azir, again, gonna be in a position with no Emperor's Divide. Gonna get charmed up here. Oh, good. Shuffle gonna be able to get back using the E. Will survive. Flash again, not use. Good patience coming in from NGO. Yeah, good shifting sands there. And now Grubs are gonna be up on this top side and Frosty back in lane with a bit of an R, but on the other side, King Coney gonna have that finished Rift Maker, which is gonna be doing a whole lot more uh, in the way of true damage in this game. It is a much nicer item um, with that Haunting Guys component, which basically just makes Gwen, you know, pretty insane as a champion. Nuke's not gonna be walking in here, guarding gonna proc. Grand Entrance gonna come through. Nuke's gonna take half of their HP, not gonna pop any summoner spells because they were used in the earlier exchange. Collateral damage and flash are still available for Nukes, and they're gonna start in on the dragon. Sunset's gonna come in with the flank. Nukes is at half HP. Joker's gonna be caught out a little bit of position here. Gonna be rooted, going to be taking a little bit of damage, and that pressure along with Sunset is gonna be enough 
for Gerard Gaming Zeta to walk away from this Hextech Rick, but it is not deleashed. Sunset's gonna stay on it, and that's gonna mean Dorado Gaming Zeta's gonna go back in. Seven th or 700 HP, the steal oh. from Sunset. Curtain Call's gonna come through with quickness. Snipe from Wistful, he's gonna take down Nukes. Odin is next, and it is a three for one trade in favor of MK7. Huge damage and a huge play from Sunset. Yeah, four for one in favor of MK there. I mean, that is a really nice play. They're able to take the dragon as well. It's just a really early smite from nukes means that Sunsets is able to secure that. Um, is also now gonna sprint towards the top side there with no care in the world for their own camps. I mean, this play is so in favor of MK7. Wistfully picks up two kills, is able to get the assists on the other two, as well as gets a play for themselves. Uh, Frosty, I don't know if this is where you want to be right now. You are full MR, my friend. Oren Horn's gonna come through. Emperor's Divide is gonna keep Frosty in the area. Sunsets will go down. Shutdown gonna go over Dorado Gaming Zeta. That will go to a no. big damage dealer. Void Grubs gonna be taken by Dorado Gaming Zeta. That is at least one. That is a win for me. But now, okay. can the rest of MK7 get out? They cannot. And somehow, Dorado Gaming Zeta win that fight, and they take some of the Void Grubs, gonna get two on the day. Somehow, is they tried to go for two plays before basing. So uh, they won the play on the bot side there with that dragon, um, and then they got a little bit excited and didn't actually spend the gold that they had just won so hard. So as a result, we saw a play that was actually in more favor of Dorado there, because they were able to spend more recently. Um, and so as a result, I mean, with a nice roam up as well from Joker, it meant that they were able to take that win um, and get some nice more gold in their pocket. Now only down 500, despite what I would call was an abysmal play of the Dragon. Um, they were able to recover nicely. Yeah, four one and one on nukes. So, you know, good damage on a Graves that's going to be threatening the longer that the game goes on. Yomu's completed, pickaxe completed. But on the other hand, wistfully two zero and two themselves, to Dirk and Ayomus with 130 CS. That is almost 50 CS in advantage against Nukes. So we can take a look at the gold really quick. We're gonna see that wistfully is is probably in the driver's seat in terms of gold right now. A zero. Probably. NGO we, we, zero two and two. Yeah, I mean, uh, the gold definitely, I think it just looks, I mean, the gold difference for Dorado, the, the way that they are so close is purely on nukes, uh, is purely on nukes for the most part. Four and one, going to be even on gold with sunsets, but I mean, sunsets has also been very efficient this game. Now, uh, NGO going to be caught out here in the mid lane, doesn't have the Q available to them, it's just going to go down again. Odin and Nukes doing such a nice job with this mid lane, locking down the Azir, who just, I think, has been really greedy with their movement abilities and just has not been warding efficiently around their lane. Um, and so a nice punish coming out for the mid jungle of Dorado. Yeah, the kill's going to go over to Nukes. You would have liked that to go to Odin, who is stacking that Dark Seal. Malignant's also completed. So looking at you know three stacks on that dark seal we'll see if they're able to get that up to potentially the jives that are on or at least just keep that ap going rift herald is now available ngo does not have teleport and it looks like drop gaming zeta may be looking to go for a posture play over there a little bit of damage in on it too indigo as the quickness is going to come through to keep wistfully alive flashing ghost having to be used as Dorado gaming zeta oh, no in to collapse onto it now frosty who has been bullied all game is going to die once again will drop the orn horn and the gold is going to go over to king coney now ngo on their way back kiwi can take a little bit of damage no needlework available for Cody right now, and a potential play here at this Rift Herald to get it commence in a battle. We'll see who's able to get it. Huey is an MVP for keeping Wistfully alive there. Yes, was forced to use both summoners, but is still alive to tell the tale. Now the other side, Cody and Sunset's just doing a nice job getting another pick onto Frosty, who is still worth gold, by the way, um, in this game. Still, you know, worth a decent amount. I didn't see the exact gold there but it's still you know worth enough that it's going for that play it's also xp um, in favor of coney and sunset so it is nice every single time uh yeah i mean just looking at the gold distribution right now i mean this gen is still so far ahead of the Ezreal between the plates um and the the kills there it's been really nice yes granted Ezreal got two kills but the play difference being able to knock down the majority on that top side is just going to make this gen's life so much nicer um going to be working towards that collector on the gen as well very nice for them there. It's going to feel really good to actually pop people with that execute. Um, I mean, looking around this, I mean, Dorado is going to struggle, I believe, a little bit because Nukes, yes, is is very strong on this Graves, 
but really only has you know two targets to hit in in sunsets and coney because really kiwi will just be dashing around and if and if nukes is in the front there we'll just get absolutely charmed and blown up by the recon engage but it's going to be a bit of a struggle uh for dorado to find a way to actually make their gold value last uh, but they're going to try nonetheless with this dragon up they're going to look to start it here at 16 minutes don't want to let mk7 get any more dra dragon stacking dragon stacking done um, and they seem to be fine with it. Um, Gwen's going to get a trade on the top side for that tower as well as push in for the next one. Harold is well going to get taken down. Yeah, and, but it's a little bit of a late start. Dorado Gaming Zeta can contest it if they wanted to. But it looks like they're going to stay towards the mid lane. They're going to push towards that mid tier one tower and they might be able to get it. Sunset to be able to pick up the Rift Herald with no contest from Dorado Gaming Zeta. A little bit of a passive play, I would say. I think Dorado Gaming Zeta did have the opportunity to contest that, but instead, you know, going for the safer route. Don't get the tower, don't really get any tower on the tower or on that tower, any damage on that tower though, pardon me. On the other hand, that is gonna be push waves in the mid lane and in the bottom lane. King County and NGO doing what they can to keep the pressure going on these side lanes and make it difficult for Zeta to go for a team fight. Yeah, I mean, looking around the map, just checking in on items for the time being. Two items finished on the jungler of Dorado Gaming, but everyone just sitting on one for the most part, besides Wistfully, who's going to have that to themselves. I mean, lethality items generally are a little bit less expensive. Um, a very nice duo of Collector and Yomu's nukes now going to get spotted here by Sunsets. Does have that finished jungle item uh, for both junglers, actually. They're going to be on that 1200 smite. Um, but yeah, this game seems to have settled a bit into a lull state. Um, just people farming out. Probably going to see a bit of action uh, when either <laughs> when either Nukes decides to clear towards Odin um, or when this next dragon spawns in about three minutes' time. I don't think either team really wants to be rushing a Baron right now. Ezreal still working towards that Man Immune uh, means that they are not going to be opting in for many fights uh, until that is done. Um, and for Dorado Gaming, that's completely fine, right? You have Frosty on this Orn, who is an absolute monster when it comes to scaling, you know, giving free items to everyone. And I have absolutely no idea what all these new Orn names are called, so don't even ask me. Huh. Um, it is it is going to be interesting to see as Kony going to get found here by Frosty. And that Orn does a good amount of damage um, with especially this new defensive item. Uh, Koenig Rukern makes trading a lot more favorable for the Orn. Gonna be the mid-tier one tower getting taken by MK7. The Rift Herald will be used to open up the first layer of defenses against Dorado Gaming Zeta. King Kony looking to potentially back here. Gonna be seen by that and is gonna stay in the area. Whistle is gonna come through. Oh, and this could potentially be a collapse in onto Frosty. Ornorm's gonna get used, but it's gonna get the knock up. Joker might be in the area to be able to keep him alive. King Kony's gonna come through. That's gonna be the curtain call. MK7 now in trouble. And King Kony's gonna go down. Teleport's gonna come in from NGO, but they're not gonna get anything out of it. And Dorado Gaming Zeta will take a very nice free kill. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a nice kill. It's a little bit of a shame that MK7 goes for a play like that. Um, Frosty definitely was overextended, but you don't have your jungler on that side. Um, so at best, you'll be in a 4v5 if Dorado Gaming decide to collapse, um, which they did successfully. And another kill went over to Nukes, which is going to be really nice for this Graves um, to just keep collecting gold in this manner. Um, going to become a problem. I know I said that the Graves was low range, and I might be cast cursing them here just a little bit. Sunset's going to get... Oh, boy. Potential gonna be the last to cone gonna try to be able to get out and does no curtain call for wistfully not really in the area but they will be able to back away that was also flash used by sunsets yeah i mean really wanted to get that knock up there just not quite uh, quick enough on the knock up there definitely could have maybe done it without having to blow flash but other than that forcing nukes out of the jungle gets a free camp for themselves um and yeah i mean we're just gonna be going back sunsets now gonna be basing for their sundered sky um, and now two items completed on almost everyone on that MK7 team. Uh, I will include the support, considering that that item is a, a stackable item. Uh, back to the... I said it... I, the Bulwark, I believe, is what it's called. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what its full name. I just know it has Bulwark in it. But anyway, that, that, mini, that mini crown item. Um, I'm not sure what the support item for Karma is. I kind of would have expected... Um, uh, be, Imperial Mandate? No, 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 no. Sorry, the the finish, the the stacking item. 
Oh, oh. I'm I forgetting what it's called, but I would have. Oh, oh, Solstice Siege. Oh, Solstice Slay. Sorry. Solstice Slay. Yeah. That's. I don't know what that item does, but anyway, I would have because I would have expected it to be Zax Axe. Uh, which is the the item that does you know a little bit of, of missing health damage and a minor explosion on ability hit uh, It seems to be generally the one that people go towards um, All right, I mean so the item that this karma has is a more of a supportive item and it's not really damage focused um, Basically what it does is if you slow or immobilize an enemy nearby um, it grants a small bit of healing to the lowest HP ally uh, at lowest it grants uh, a little bit of health and some movement speed to the lowest HP ally nearby. Um, which in this game could be interesting. Oh, hold on. Wistfully going to be forced to flash. V honestly, very fast hands there from the MK7 jungler there to dodge that charm from Odin. Uh, very nicely well done. And now Dragon as well. Going to get started out by Sunsets. Um, who potentially might be baiting his team into losing Baron here. But the Dragon taken so quickly that Dorado Gaming not even going to be allowed to fully start this Baron. Oh, MK7 don't know that. They're still going to walk in. Odin going to get spotted we, now. Now we got a charm in on to NGO Emperor's Bide. We'll take down Odin. That's going to be one for Emily. They're going to be able to take down NGO. Nukes going to try to get out. Nice utilization of Sunset's ult. Nukes in trouble. Nukes is not dead. There's the needle work. Shut down onto the graves. Double kill for King Cody. Looking for a triple. And they're going to get it on the Frosty. That play goes to MK7, King Kony with huge damage. Yeah, I mean, the play looked to be good for Dorado Gaming, you know, instantly blowing up uh, the mid laner there of Azir. Just not quite, though, gonna be able to do enough damage throughout the rest of the fight. Unfortunately, with the direction they just chose to fight in, it meant that King Kony had the freest flank. And Joker, that is not your side of the map, my friend. Uh, you have a long journey to go to get back to any semblance of safety. Is Kiwi gonna get the grand entrance flash force out from Joker? Gonna be able to survive for the time being. Um, does delay the backs a little bit of MK7, which means that Dorado Gaming have a bit of an opening potentially to get onto the map and set up some defensive vision before this Baron push comes down. Uh, but I think credit has to go to the MK7 uh, team there. Uh, you know, Azir had a very nice shuffle, was able to knock down. I believe that was Odin pretty Odin, much immediately yeah. um, with a very nice shuffle. It did a good chunk as well, the nukes, um, who was not really able to do too much in that fight. I mean, looking around, who is he Who is he really hitting? He's hitting, you know, Mr. Kiwiism, who has the 25% damage reduction um, on the initial hits. Uh, Sunsets as well, very tanky on this Xin Xiao with a whole bunch of health stacked in this game. Um, and then King Kona coming out on the other side gets a really nice usage of the thousand needles to just get so much as though nukes gonna try a little bit of a damage test here gonna find king coney actually does a decent amount of damage here oh boy the needlework is gonna get used Odin's in trouble misses that one but still yet the collateral damage will be enough to take down king coney but it was close in the 2v1 that was <laughs> real scary for the dorado mid jungle i thought coney might get enough healing back from rift maker there uh to actually potentially kill nukes as well uh, but now, I mean, this curtain call is doing such a nice job providing cover fire uh, for the trio here to take both the turret and the inhib, which is, I, I guess, in trade for the spot tower, which is not the worst thing in the world. I think it'd be hard for Dorado Gaming to actually contest the push um, of Mario Kart 7 here. And so they've decided to just allow nukes to collect that, that turret bounty gold um, for themselves, which will provide just a little bit more for the team around them um, as they prepare for, I mean, the soul fight in two minutes time. Uh, not the soul fight because it's two to two. Um, oh, it is two to two. Sorry, I yeah. completely for. Wow, I that is. Mm. Last uh, season I, it would have been the soul fight. I, you know, I'm gonna say it. Last season this would have been the soul fight. Considering <laughs> considering grubs were not a thing. My apologies. You know, I uh, you know, just 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 to just to make sure you know how old I am. Hold that thought though. We've got a ult coming in. Nice charm gonna land in on a key. We're gonna be able to get out of it. Frosty now potentially in trouble. Sunset's gonna come through. Gonna be able to get a oh. nice. A Vanguard's edge onto Odin, but it's not going to go in the way that they wanted it to. Back's going to come in from Kiwi. The work from them is done. Wistfully doesn't have the curtain call available, and low health bars for the Dorado Gaming Zeta squad are going to allow for another turret to go down. 28 seconds remaining on the uh, Baron buff, with now King Kony on the t on the bottom side of the Rift will take the last inner structure down to make this a very productive Baron power play for MK7 now up by almost 8,000 gold. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what you want to see from a Baron power play, right? They're able to win the fight in mid. They're able to then take the Baron. I mean, they 
backed and immediately went out onto the map. Yes, King Kony died on the bot side there, but I think that's completely worth it. As Kiwi is now going to find the jungler for Dorado Gaming. Nukes, though, not afraid to go forward here as Kony looking for an angle on the side is not going to pull the trigger on that engage um, as the rest of their team not really able to join yes you have azir with the teleport um, but the Jin was not close enough to provide cover uh, for that engage should they decide to go for it but i mean uh, looking around the map it's going to be three items on most of the members of mk7 uh, everyone but the jungler support and mid laner actually not everyone but <laughs> not most people but anyway going to be going for that frozen heart omricon which is really really nice this game uh into nukes who is Gonna be, you know, starting to struggle a bit on these items here. Gonna be going for the cleaver as opposed to anything like uh, LDR. Uh, just provide a bit more tankiness and a bit more CDR uh, for themselves in this game. But uh, looking at the way this map is currently situated, there's a whole lot of blue side vision um, in the blue quadrant of this bot side. Trying to get any control over the bot side to potentially contest this dragon. Um, it's gonna be really hard. I mean, Dorado Gaming have already given up this dragon. Nukes is on the top side, but they're not really gonna be able to trade for much, considering these supers are pushing down the top lane. Yeah, and that's gonna be so point for MK7 as well. Odin gonna go with the Malignant's Cosmic Drive build again, and I really am struggling to see the value of it right now. Um, I get the idea. I get the get the potential of trying to go for that one, but you're just not being able to pump out the damage necessary in order to to finish some of these kills off. But still has the opportunity to potentially find a play here. Those charms have been on point all game, and we could potentially see a charm play happen now with an opportunity for MK7 to come through. Curtain Call is going to get knocked up thanks to the Frosty with a big Orn Horn. Going to be the uh, turret going to come in from MGO, but Frosty is going to be taking so much damage. Can't get out. Who cares about tanky war? King Cody's going to get hit by that charm. Will be taken out. Wistfully is going to be on a rampage, though. Now 4-0 and 6 on the Jin. Will take out Joker. Frosty's out. That's actually going to be Emperor's Divide being used. Big damage onto everybody. Odin will go down. Thanks to Sunset. Pop goes. The Graves. Wistfully is unstoppable. And Indigo will fall to make it another ace for MK7. Yeah, and that should be the game, Moose. They have supers in the top side. Another really nice fight coming out from mk7 i thought throughout a game they had it with that flank from frosty got the instant interrupt on the curtain call from wistfully but king coney just did such a nice job in that fight splitting dorado gaming off from their top laner there and unlike when orn does not have a mist to hide in from the team he is just going to absolutely be eating so much damage there again only has the root current and jock show so not really going to be tanky enough to provide enough support for himself to actually get through um that team fight alive and dorado you know they gave it their best shot but the flash from both the support and mid laner of mk7 provided a really nice re-engage for them to go back in and secure that fight win um i think wishfully did a nice job as well spacing despite the you know the initial whoopsie of pulling the trigger in front of an orn horn um but i mean did a nice job had a whole bunch of damage with that build and that will be the first win of the aml winter split going towards mario kart 7 i'm gonna say it the super team of the aml Oh boy, well, if, we're, if, if we're going by the definition of a super team, right? You took the they best players, indeed. you took the best players from the best teams, you smash them together, and you know, are, are praying that they work. And luckily, in, in MK7's case, for the time being, it works. Yeah, and shout out to Dorado Gaming Zeta. I think they definitely held on, but the small advantages that MK7 were able to pull off were able to win them out in both games you said the same type of sentence where it looked good for dorado gaming zeta but they weren't able to finish the job for whatever reason mk7 was able to come out on top survive shout out to whistly on that gin zero deaths so played exceptionally safe shout out to kiwi for being able to keep wistfully alive through a lot of those engagements and and overall you know shout out i think to sun goes to sunsets who showed domination on the on the Xin Zhao here in this series was the catalyst for big snowball in game one and, and kept it together despite uh, despite nukes being so ahead in in kills and gold in game two so overall mk7 showing us why they are a dominant team why they are the team to be to be respected here at the start of the aml but that is going to do it today for the show hopefully next week 
there will be no spectator issues and we will not have to do this spectator this this replay stuff but uh regardless thank you guys so much for watching before we go uh any final thoughts septi anything you want to shout out yeah, I mean, I love to shout out the community for coming back for another amazing season of AML. Uh, I mean, if that series, you know, let us know anything. It's that we got a whole bunch of talent in this league ready to show off for everyone. Um, we'd like to thank, I mean, Moose, thank you for casting with me tonight. I appreciate it. Wookie, thank you for doing production, despite the uh, scuffed setup we have this evening. Um, two more things. We'd like to thank CoachFight.gg again for sponsoring the stream. Thank you guys for being such a loyal partner with the Aegis community. Um, and last but certainly not least, Moose, we love AML, and we love other Aegis content. And for those of you who are unaware, we run other leagues with other skill brackets. Unfortunately, you missed it, but ADL, our Diamond League, ran on Monday. Con Esports X versus Rubber Ducky Gaming, which I am sure was a banger series if you want to go back and potentially rewatch that. Um, if it actually went on, I'm not sure what the deal was because the... Anyway, but... Moving on to Thursday, we have the Aegis Executioners League, the new name for the new rank system. The AEL is going to be XG Flying versus Glacial Wolves. That's going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday, tomorrow. And then on Friday, we have the return of the APL, the more, I guess, the rebranded AGL <laughs> for Friday games. It's going to be Dorado Gaming Sai versus Literal Monkeys Gold, which is also going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern. Um... But with that said, Moose, I think we have had a wonderful stream tonight. I apologize for the late start, everyone. Um, hopefully, as Moose said, we get to sort it by next week. But if not, it's still going to be a banger regardless. going to be a ton of fun. Thank you guys all so much for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Stay in touch on the Discord. We will keep you guys up with updates on whether we're going to start at 5 or, or 5.30, 5.45, depending on how long game one goes. So keep an eye on that. Thank you guys all so much for being here. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you guys all next time. Take care.